playing the audio. It's You can make it out, but I don't know if it's worthy of radio. It, it might not come across too good for our AM stations out there. It's up at InfoWars.com. It's up at DrudgeReport.com at the very top. Easiest place to find it. You can hear the audio to the newspaper, and she's the governor is uh, clearly North Carolina Governor Bev Perdue, a Democrat, is proposing suspending the congressional elections for the cycle so legislators can focus on fixing the economy. And it was serious. The newspaper has said it was like it was serious. This is the kind of stuff that's being talked about. We already have a super Congress. Obama's already launching wars without congressional approval and saying he doesn't need them. The federal government is spying on us without warrants. I mean, it's all come out. Tom, Tom, Facebook, uh, all of them are spying on us without warrants, big time in our face. And it's time that we face those facts. Uh, I want to go to Wayne Madsen on a host of issues, formerly with the National Security Agency. He's written for some of the biggest publications in this country, really uh, doesn't need much introduction, on this radio show. His website's waynemadsenreport.com. He's also worked as one of the founders of uh, Electronic Privacy Information Center, EPIC, uh, that just does great work. Uh, and he uh, joins us uh, today to get into, well, just a bunch of different uh, issues. First off, Wayne, uh, from what I've seen with the different telecommunications acts, the cell phones, the Facebook, uh, the telecommunication systems, the OnStar, I mean, it's always been spying on everybody. Uh, this is a total merger of government and big corporations. From your research dealing with this, why do you think it's coming out now that OnStar is tracking you and listening to you with audio and that Facebook's tracking everywhere you go, even when you leave Facebook and TomTom selling your data or when you call and order a pizza, uh, they're selling that data to the cops? Well, I think this is something that's been going on as far as uh, what's been on the FBI's wish list and other intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies for quite some time. And now we're finally getting the devil in the details. And uh, this is something that uh, first started under the Clinton administration when we had this huge battle over the government retaining encryption keys to be able to de decode uh, encrypted communications. And we fought strenuously against that. And the, the FBI and others always said, oh, we're, we only do this in, in, in the event of a um, uh, smoking gun, a kidnapping situation, all these, you know, worst case scenarios. And we always knew they were lying about it, that they just wanted to have these capabilities for their fishing expeditions. And lo and behold, that's what we seem to have now, that there is no criminal predicate when the FBI and the NSA and these other agencies conduct these uh, forms of electronic surveillance. And here we have everything is basically fair game. Everything's on the table as far as surveillance is concerned. Well, Wayne, where is this going? Because you have this coming out now. It's it's Facebook and TomTom Tom and uh, OnStar and the rest of them telling on themselves. They're trying to send out little customer announcements. Hey, by the way, we're our main business is not you paying for your subscription. We're tracking everything you do and selling it to insurance companies, you name it. I mean, this is beyond 1984. Well, that's right. And I think what they're trying to do is cover their butts uh, from lawsuits, from, from customers and people who feel that their privacy has been invaded. Uh, we, we had this battle a long time ago, too, on uh, the issue of opt-in or opt-out as far as, you know, these this type of surveillance is concerned. And, and, and clearly we have these uh, companies now engaging in an, in an opt-out, that you're already in their surveillance system, but now it, it seems like you don't even have the choice of whether to, uh, whether to opt out or not. Well, yeah, so, that was the new controversy, is they've always said, hey, we're spying on you, but people wouldn't read their, their little terms and conditions. Now they're saying, we don't care if you buy the car and never turn it on. We're going to track everything you're doing. I mean, this is, this is an outrageous, outrageous power grab. Well, absolutely, and uh, of course they're sharing it with uh, not only the government, but they're selling this information to other companies. And people always say, well, you know, what, what's, what do you have to fear most, uh, private companies or the government? Well, it's always been the case that the, that the government and these private companies that traffic in this type of personal information are working together. So there's really no line between the two. 
Now, Wayne, is there anything else you want to add on this subject before I shift gears to Libya? I would just tell people, you know, that, that, that they, they need to be. What I do when I meet a, a confidential source is I, I get rid of the electronics altogether. Uh, and when I meet somebody, it's face to face, and I take precautions that I'm not followed, that there's no uh, boom microphones or shotgun microphones in the area. Uh, and, and if people have uh, want to engage in uh, personal and sensitive uh, confidential communications, Face-to-face, -face. it's the only way. And even then you got to watch it because they've got gunshot detectors in most cities that are actually high-powered acoustical microphones. They put these in in 98 in Austin, and the actual government grant admitted that that was a high-powered acoustic um, shotgun mics that can be directed and listened through the windows of your house uh, from the vibration to the membrane. Uh, they can listen to people hundreds of yards away. But they told everybody in Austin it was gunshot detectors to, to triangulate where the gunshots come from. And now they're all over the city in most areas, in parks, listening to everyone. Think about it. Land of the Free, Home of the Brave, and OnStar admits they've got audio listening to you, and they're selling where you go to the cops and to corporations. And even if you don't want it on, it is. Uh, now, looking at Libya, uh, I, of course, you've been to Libya uh, recently, and Gaddafi's still there, still fighting, but now it's kind of moved off the front page of the news. Uh, and we have the uh, al-Qaeda commander who's in charge of Tripoli. It looks like he may be the new leader of the whole country. Uh, this Abdul Belhaj guy now writing articles for The Guardian. We have that article uh, out today at Infowars.com by Tony Cardellucci uh, breaking it down. But here's ABC News. Uh, a few weeks ago, they were worried about heat-seeking surface-to-air missiles that could you know, take down any passenger liner they want. Now they admit thousands of them are missing and have fallen into the hands of al-Qaeda. But... And, and we're told they're having to move drones into Libya to bomb the rest of Africa because of al-Qaeda, but they just put al-Qaeda into power. So this this looks like a real setup uh, by the system to take even more liberties, saying they're protecting us from al-Qaeda. Well, that's right. And we also know that uh, from the ABC News report that now the Pentagon says they have to put personnel in Libya to be able to, uh, you know, uh, get these um, surface there, these man pads, uh, for, uh, these uh, uh, handheld or shoulder-launched uh, missile launchers. And uh, so what we're seeing now is a, is a reason to put boots on the ground. Now, we always knew that there were special operations in there, but now it looks like the Pentagon is going to use this report as a reason to put troops in Libya. Uh, and it's just, uh, you know, it's another example of the U.S., uh, uh, being uh, uh, ultimately behind, at least the CIA being behind these so-called al-Qaeda uh, brigades all over the world. I have a story up at my website today how, how the CIA is basically using al-Qaeda, Jamaa Islamiyah, uh, as a reason to uh, destabilize or a means to destabilize the government of Indonesia, just like they've done in Pakistan. So this is, this, this is the real purpose of these so-called jihadist groups. It's destabilization across uh, um, from uh, uh, Morocco all the way over to uh, Indonesia. And they, and they used them against the Serbs and the Russians, everybody else. But if you have any geopolitical understanding, uh, any common sense, you knock out Gaddafi, who's made peace deals, to put al-Qaeda in, and then, oh, now we've got to occupy the country and use it for AFRICON, as you predicted, as I predicted, as a base to invade other countries to fight al-Qaeda, who you actually just put into power. It's just a label. I mean, they could come just put an al-Qaeda sticker on your door and say, well, we're taking your house. There's an al-Qaeda sticker. It's a chess piece. They move around to invade any country they want, even when they put the al-Qaeda in power. I mean, it is... And Tony Blair can meet six times secretly with Gaddafi and invest with him. And all of this comes out and nobody gets in trouble. It's total la-la land. In closing, Wings, I know you got to go. I understand Iran angry that U.S. warships and others are all around them and that before the Iran-Iraq war had, had fully ended, the U.S. attacked and blew up most of the Iranian Navy and then that big naval engagement nobody seems to know about. But in the final equation uh, here... Uh, this is a big provocation, and, and, and I see they're saying it's a, it's hypocrisy. If the U.S. gets mad about Iranian warships off our coast and international waters, well, why do you have your ships, you know, a half mile off our coast? But what's behind this? Well, we, 
I, I would note that uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mullen, uh, recently stated that he thought there should be a hotline, a military hotline between U.S. forces in the region and Iran's military to just prevent any sort of uh, misunderstanding. You know, there's these Iranian speedboats that are basically under the control of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard that sometimes come out and, and, and circle U.S. warships. So he, this looks like it may be an attempt to uh, scuttle that idea of, of Admiral Mullen to have this hotline by ratcheting things up. Uh, of course, uh, if Iran were to put ships off our coast, and it's not clear that they even have the capability, it, it would probably be something like we saw during the Soviet times where Soviet uh, task forces would uh, skirt the U.S. coast on their way to Cuba. They would need some place to go to here in the Western Hemisphere. We know Venezuela, but let me stop you right there. I, I totally agree with that analysis. This is their military industrial complex. Their hardliners don't want to make friends as well because they want to use that as a way to stay in power. That's right. That's right. And just like we saw during the Cold War, I mean, a year after Kennedy was uh, basically eliminated by our military industrial complex, Nikita Khrushchev was eliminated, uh, eliminated by the Soviet military industrial complex. We went from a, a burgeoning detente, of course, to uh, the icy years of the Cold War. Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReport.com. Look forward to having you on for a full hour in the near future. Thank you so much for spending time with us. You bet, Alex. All right, there goes Wayne. Excellent analysis. So now i got to get my rights up because thousands of heat seekers have been given to Al-Qaeda. And our government put them in power and gave them the things. I mean, I'm sick of it. How obvious does it have to get?